Hand sanitizer. These days you go through, have you guys tried the spray kind? The spray kind is fantastic. I'm a big fan of the spray kind. It dries a lot quicker. It's nice. Hopefully the echo in this room is not too bad. Historically speaking, recording down here in my kitchen is a little iffy because it's a, a big open room and it tends to echo. So hopefully it's not too bad. But anyway, a little something different today. Today we're gonna go a little into the woo woo. We're gonna go a little, doing a little something different. Thought I would just sit down and talk to you guys today. As far as the YouTube game goes, I'm on the older end, I'm 42. I'm the senior citizen or the upperclassman, so to speak. I'd rather be considered an upperclassman than a senior citizen, I think. <laughs> but some other YouTube buddies like Taylor from Best Damn EDC or Dan from Bourbon Junkies, they like to call me things like Graybeard and Gandalf and Father Time and, and all these clever things they come up with. So those guys can kiss my I mean, who the just kidding, I actually love those guys. I thought maybe today I would take a little time and take a stab at a video I've seen other YouTube channels do. Five things I wish I would have known in my 20s. Or in my case, five things that I wish I would have known in my 20s or maybe things that I would have, that I knew in my 20s, but I wish I would have actually practiced in my 20s and done in my 20s. A lot of the videos I've seen on YouTube of people doing this, the people that are doing the videos are like barely out of their 20s. They're like 31 and they're talking about things they wish they knew in their 20s. I mean, hell. I've got underwear older than that. I'm just kidding. But I thought maybe it'd be interesting to see a guy in his 40s, a good decade or longer uh, away from my 20s. Things that I know now that I wish I would have known or done better in my 20s. So I thought that could be fun. We'll sit and talk, have a little discussion today about dealing with this coffee, which means it's time to get the workout on for today. The first thing we're gonna go over is probably the most concrete, the most tangible of the things we're gonna talk about today. After this one, we're gonna go a little more woo-woo, a little more theoretical, and just kind of thoughts of life and whatnot. But this one is actually something you need to do physically. Number one is take care of yourself. Now, this is a pretty broad range of things. This could actually probably be broken down into multiple sections, and probably a couple videos. But basically, when you're in your 20s, now this doesn't apply to everybody, but most, I know I did, I ate like crap, I didn't sleep enough because I was up late partying and chasing girls and acting stupid, so I didn't get enough sleep. I exercised because I wanted those beach muscles, but I didn't exercise properly, I didn't do a lot of cardio, I didn't uh, stretch and warm up before I worked out and so forth, kind of like I'm doing right now, a little warm up on the old Echo Bike. By the way, Rogue Echo Bike, I'm just using it right now to warm up, get the heart rate up a little bit before I start working out. But if you want to do interval training on this thing, they don't call it the devil's tricycle for nothing. This thing is a puke machine. I promise it's brutal. You don't think about it because when you're in your 20s, your body can handle it, right? Your engine's running full speed ahead in your 20s. You can handle not eating as well and not sleeping as much and doing those things and you can tolerate it. A, you're not running at your full potential that you could be running at. You could be doing a lot better. And B, that sets you up once you get into your 40s, 50s, and 60s with some problems. Like, you know, if you eat like crap, you could run into high cholesterol issues, blood pressure issues. I've had plenty of injuries. I have sore shoulders, sh sore elbows, and everything else from not warming up and stretching out properly when I worked out because I was too busy in there trying to build muscles, clanging and banging, all the way down to simple things like keeping your teeth clean so that when you get older, you're not missing half of them. You don't have half your teeth aren't fake. Or, you know, taking care of your skin, keeping it moisturized, using sunscreen. Like, for instance, my poor mom, when she was a kid and she was in her 20s, the hip thing was to use a bunch of baby oil and go out in the sun and cook yourself. Well, now she has to go to the dermatologist probably once every few months and get some little bit of skin cancer burned off. So when you're in your 20s, don't just think about the here and the now. Take care of yourself, take care of your body, take care of your face, use sunscreen, do all the things so when you get to your 50s, why you gotta get some of that Tej Hanley in your life, bro? Gotta get some Tej up on you. <clears throat> For the love of God, man, I thought you were done working out today. You know I don't like to be out here at the same time as you. Sorry, bro. You know I gotta get this pump on. Rise and grind, clanging and banging. Besides, man, why wouldn't you wanna work out with me? I'm awesome. Oh, nothing much. Just, you know, small things like you grunt, you make all kinds of noise, even when you're just warming up, like you're lifting a thousand pounds. You carry that ridiculous gallon jug of water around with you all the time. You wear a weight belt all the time, even when you're warming up. You do curls in the squat rack. You know, basically everything about everything you do in the gym. You know, small things like that. Not cool, bro. Thought we were swole mates. Bro, it's bro, it's very unbro of you, bro. This guy, 
even though I fundamentally disagree with him on basically everything he does in the gym, I do agree with what he's saying about Tiege Hanley. Tiege Hanley is a great subscription men's skincare system. They make great products, they are really affordable, they have systems starting as low as like $25 a month that includes a face wash, a scrub, an AM and PM moisturizer. I think now they even have a $15 like starter kit for you to try out, see if you like their products, which includes a face wash and a AM moisturizer. I really personally love the AM moisturizer because like we were talking just a minute ago, it has like a 20 SPF, I think it is, in the moisturizer. So you've got a little bit of that protection on your face uh, every day. And if you're like me, you live in Florida, it's good to have that extra protection so you don't have to deal with those melanomas we were just talking about. I don't know much about this cable fella, but I guarantee he hasn't killed as many people as melanoma has. And even if you don't live in Florida, with coming into summer, everybody's gonna be outdoors a lot more, hopefully, as corona passes, and uh, having a little bit of that extra protection is always good. All their stuff is made with top quality ingredients. It is specially formulated for guys just like me and you. It's like this workout drink I got here. Prime ingredients. This thing's got like four types of protein. It's got BCAAs, it's got creatine, it's got caffeine, it's got gorilla urine which is supposedly great for testosterone enhancement. You want some? Whoa, whoa. Did you just say gorilla piss? Did you just say you're drinking gorilla piss? Oh, for sure, bro. Have you seen gorillas? They are jacked. Yeah, man. I mean, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is swole too, but I'm not finna drink his piss. No pain, no gain, bro. If you're not gonna be extreme, you gotta step off, bro. I guess you got me there, Arnold. I'm just not as extreme as you are, buddy. But anyway. Tiege is a great company and they send you a full 30 day supply of everything you need every single month straight to your doorstep. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, check the link I'm gonna put below and that will give you a nice little discount on your first box of Tiege. Thanks to Tiege Handling for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. I'm gonna go drink like 12 raw eggs and make sure I get those gains, stare at myself in the mirror for a while, maybe take some Instagram pictures, you know, stuff like that. You want me to get you some eggs? No, man, I think I'm good. I appreciate it. Just please, please go and let me just work out in peace for the love of God. No, no eggs. Suit yourself, bro. Won't get those gains though. All right, number two. Give absolutely zero fucks. Put you down here so you're not shaking about too much. When I say give zero fucks, I don't mean just don't care about anything, don't care if you hurt somebody's feelings, don't care about yourself and be just a lazy piece of crap. That's not what I mean. What I mean is be comfortable in your own skin, be happy with who you are, and don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Don't be afraid to be weird, don't be afraid to be different. Be yourself and give zero shits about anybody else's opinion. If it makes you happy and you like it, it's the right thing. I don't give a crap what other people say. With me, for instance, being on social media, man, if I gave a shit, I would be having a hard time. If I had a penny for every time somebody said, my beard looks stupid, or we went through the Duck Dynasty phase, or everybody called me Duck Dynasty. Now it's, I'm constantly called a hipster. I don't know how many times people have thought that I wanted their opinion about what they think about tattoos. I like beards, so I've had a beard for years. I like tattoos, so I have tattoos. So for all you people that don't like that, you can go straight What makes me happy is what I do. And I think that is something that most people should practice. If you go around life trying to live your life according to other people's opinions, you're never gonna be happy. Figure out what your style is, what you like, the things that make you happy, and do those things regardless of what the haters say. One of my favorite sayings, lions do not concern themselves with the opinions of sheep. If you ever watched Game of Thrones, you probably heard that. Besides, most of the people that say nasty shit and are just ugly people and pick on people and insult people are living in their mother's basement with Cheeto fingers waiting for their grilled cheese to come down. They're just losers that are insecure with their own self. Real men, good people, don't tear other people down. That's not what you do, so give zero fucks. Now, I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm smelly, I'm sweaty, I stink from working out, and you guys have voiced many times that you don't like the shower scenes. <laughs> so. I'm gonna go get cleaned up, take a shower. We'll be back in a few. All right, that is much better. I am feeling much, much cleaner. Ooh, always feels good after you work out to get a shower, get the funk off. So what are we on, number three? 
don't be afraid to fail. Failure is good in certain ways. Take risks. Without risk, there's no reward. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And you know, I can go on and on with all the cliche sayings to get my point across, but the point is don't always play it safe and conservative. I, for a long time, worked a boring nine to five job because it paid the bills and it was consistent. But the whole time, because it was a soul crushing job that I did not find fulfilling at all, I was constantly taking shots. I went through the police academy. I actually graduated top of my class because I wanted to be up in law enforcement for quite a while. Didn't work out when I graduated. It was uh, about 08 when the bubble collapsed and the economy took a shit and the counties in my area were on hiring freezes. So fail, fail number one. After that, I still hated what I was doing. So I tried to get involved in something else. So I opened a gym. I did that for a little while and it was okay, but I was working my butt off. It wasn't making enough money to make it worth the amount of work that was being put in. So again, another one failed, but that's okay. I don't look at either one of those things as a bad thing. I wouldn't take either one of them back because they were both learning experiences. They were both things that taught me things. And if I'm not taking shots, I'm not trying. Then I dove into YouTube head first. It was a big risk doing this. Uh, when I went full time on YouTube and quit my job, it was a big risk because YouTube is a risky career. It can be great one day and nothing the next, but I enjoy doing it and it fulfills me and it's creative and I like it. I think sometimes a job that is fulfilling and doing things that you love and you enjoy is a better benchmark for success than the number on a paycheck. Now, that being said, I know we all have bills and we have to pay them. So you do have to take calculated risks. Don't, you know, put yourself into bankruptcy or anything, but you've got to take risks or you're just going to be stagnant. Failure isn't bad. Failure is just an opportunity to analyze what went wrong, recalibrate, and get back after it. I think Jocko will link, actually. He did a little speech about failure one time that was really motivating. You should probably look up sometime. What knife do we want today? Microtech? Ah, yeah. Haven't carried my good old bug out for a while. I think it's a bug out kind of day. I think I'll go Glycine Combat Sub Golden Eye for the watch. Well, a big thank you to my buddies, Pete and Taylor, by the way, for getting me into the watch hobby. I've bought more than I need to in the last month in watches because I love hobbies that have depth. If there's a hobby that has depth and has stuff. I'm gonna get, just dive head first into it. That's just my personality. One more cliche saying before we go, because it's one of my favorites. I actually think I'm gonna get a tattoo of it to remind myself, fortune favors the bold. It's the truth. Take risks. You'll be happy you did. Otherwise life's just boring. Can you hear that? My damn chair's developed a squeak. That's super annoying. I gotta get a little editing done. And then I believe my list of crap that I need to get done today is finished. That's a good feeling having your list checked off for the day. But anyway, number four. Yeah, I think we're on number four. And this one may be not so popular. Some people may not agree with me on this at all, but college is not the answer. Yeah, sorry. Like I said, some of you might not agree with me on this. So don't get me wrong. Am I saying college is bad? Absolutely not. Am I saying don't go to college? No. If you are passionate about something that you know requires a college degree, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, whatever it may be, something you know requires a degree in order for you to get into that field, by all means, go to college. Get the beer pong tables ready and go to college. I'm only suggesting that society has pigeonholed young people today into thinking that college is the only avenue. And I don't think that's true. I think for a lot of people, it may not be the best idea because you end up with a bullshit degree that's not gonna help you with anything because you felt like you needed to and you're out of college, you have a crap load of debt and you're fighting for an entry level job at a company making not that much money and all this debt piled on top of you. And I just don't think that's a good way for young people to start their career. If you don't have a specific job that you know you want that requires a degree, go out there and do something. Go out there and do it. Get an apprenticeship doing what it is that you want to do. Start at the entry level of a job and work your way up and really learn the ins and outs of that career or that path. Sometimes you get a better education actually doing the thing than you do sitting in a classroom having somebody tell you about doing the thing. Hell, if you don't know what you want to do when you graduate high school, I would argue that it's better to take a year off and kind of go out in the work field and do some things or travel, try to figure out what the hell you want to do before you just jump into getting a, you know, generic business degree 
because you don't know what else you want to do and straddling yourself with a bunch of debt. College is definitely great. It is definitely the path for some people, but it's not necessarily the answer for everybody. So don't feel like you have to jump straight into college. So that's my opinion. You may or may not agree, but it is what it is. It's my list. Let me finish up this editing and then I think we're going to close it out. It's time for me to shut it down for the day. Maybe have a little drink, a little drink, have a little whiskey, close out the day. Come on, would you come on? All right. We're going to finish off this guy right here because I got a new guy. Found this double oak store pick at Total Wine the other day. And my uh, current bottle of double oak, which is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time, was dangerously low. So I thought it was a perfect time. Polish this guy off and get a new one. By the way, you can see that my favorite glass ever from Peter McKinnon. This was his uh, whiskey glass he just released recently. Awesome, awesome glass. This lends to my next and last topic perfectly, which is slow down and enjoy life. I know people have probably said that this is not an extremely original idea, but ex especially with me getting into my 40s now, I've realized more than ever, older you get, the faster things go. And I know you've heard people say that, but the older you get, you will see it firsthand. And it is absolutely true. The older you get, things start flipping by. My kids were all just wee little babes months ago, it feels like. And now my oldest is about to be 15. My middle is about to be 10 and my youngest is seven. I know when I was in my 20s, and especially when you're growing up through your teens and your 20s, you're always looking forward to that next birthday. You can't wait till you be 18 so you're an adult and you can vote and you can go to clubs and you can do these things. You can't wait till you're 21 because you can drink, you can go to bars. You can't wait for that next phase in life and you're always kind of looking forward and pushing. And while looking forward and having goals and all that thing is fantastic, it is equally as important to take a little time, slow down, enjoy some of the finer things in life, spend time with your friends and family, and just enjoy the present. Don't get so wrapped up on the hustle in the future that you forget to enjoy where you're at because you'll look up one day and you'll be like me and you'll have a gray beard and your kids will be growing up and you'll be like, damn, that went fast. <laughs> So enjoy it. That's it for me today, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this is a little different than what I normally do, but every now and then I like to jump on here and do a little something different and just kind of have a little more conversational style video with you guys. Let me know down below if you agree with any of these or if you have any things that you wish you knew in your 20s. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. We will see you in the next video. Matter what, mm -hmm. told you I'ma do me. Why you hating on me? Fly that flag. Fly that flag. Never had double up. I suggest you get yourself. Next video out. Leaf and barrel. The rum video we're gonna do should be out probably within a couple days. Early part of next week. Finishing it up now. So keep an eye out for that. Look at that. Uh.